like where there's a, say a river that's impaired um, where you would want to um, use water in lieu of um, just discharge to the ocean or um, you know application to a golf course um, looking at treating that water to a higher standard and um, possibly transferring it over to a use like ag um, possibly having some type of a groundwater recharge basin or um, some type of another use that would um, in lieu of type use so in lieu of pulling water out of the stream um, you would it's basically keeping the water in the basin for the the cycle that's essentially um, what we're talking about there and then the second one um, improving and protecting groundwater quality I think that's that's a big part of what is going on in um, Southern California a lot of the uh, work that Orange County Water District is doing with their groundwater replenishment system um, we've been a big part of funding that um, and I think when we when we put that item down that's kind of what we were thinking was to encourage more of those types of groundwater recharge activities um, and as an example for like Orange County it's because they have the um, seawater intrusion issues and so they're basically keeping that stable barrier there by pumping the um, recycled water in to keep that barrier up correct Thank you. I've always wondered if staff just puts things in the box, you know, just to put things in the box, or you've actually thought it out. So I thank you very much. Thanks for the question. All right, let's have, move to. I have a question, oh, yeah, just a sure. quick question. No, of course. Um, and really, for the record, more than anything else, but on Victor Valley Wastewater Reclamation Authority, the two letters, uh, one of them appears that they think that they would be excluded. And we talked yesterday about this, so just for the record, if you could explain how this would work. So, just for the record, yeah. there, we have not set the interest rate on them. So, if the board approves the item as it stands right now, um, it would be as of today, we haven't set the interest rate, so they would be included with projects that could get the lower interest rate. Okay. For both of the, I think mm -hmm. they have two projects. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, I, I just wanted it on the record. Um, board member Kimberly Cox called yesterday about this, and so she was making an inquiry, and so I thought it would be important just to get it on the record because of her concerns. Thanks. All right, we okay to, we can talk after people talk too. All right, first we have uh, Gary Darling, uh, Western Recycled Water Coalition. And you have a PowerPoint. Hey, thanks for your leadership on this, Gary. Thank you, uh, Chair Marcus and, and members of the board. Uh, as I was. You should use, as the I was, is that taller, use the taller one. Oh, use the taller one. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I can put this one right in my mouth, I yeah, think. That's what, that's Is that, can you hear me now? Yeah. Good. Can you hear me now? Okay, so thank you uh, for allowing me to present to you today. I was recalling uh, as I was preparing that the last time I talked in front of the State Water Resources Control Board was exactly 20 years ago. And I believe that uh, Don Mon uh, was the chair at that point in time, and Walt Pettit was the executive director. And we got approval to uh, the 14 water rights that needed to be amended to build the Los Vaqueros Reservoir Project. So I had a good time in front of the board 20 years ago. It's been that long. So today, uh, I want to focus on uh, recycled water. And um, I'm not quite sure it's a hobby, but it's definitely a passion of mine. Uh, and uh, I do represent a coalition of 22 agencies in and around the Bay Area, stretching out actually into the Central Valley with the um, city of Fresno. Uh, down to uh, Monterey area and all the way up to Yachtville. Uh, so we have a set of 25 projects that we are moving through the environmental review process through feasibility uh, towards construction that will produce the next 120,000 acre feet of new water in the state of California. So we're very interested in this topic uh, today. My key messages are, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about the survey that, that Jim ref referred to, um, there's over 225, over a quarter of a million acre feet of projects out there in California that unless if we're able to find partnerships at the state level or the federal level, they probably won't get built. That's a quarter of a million acre feet. Locals are willing, and that's our survey says, willing to share 50% uh, cost. That is a magic marker, and I'll get into why that's important to uh, the local share. The lower uh, clean water SRF 
interest rates and longer duration help meet that 50 percent target. And I'll talk to you about a commitment that I'll make to you in terms of we want to get the money out the door and we're committed to go find more money for this program. We're very enthused about that. So are we in a drought? You know that. I don't have to really get into the details, but by the time we get the April uh, snowpack survey and the, and the reservoir levels, uh, I think that, that there will be a very much heightened uh, uh, concern in the state of California. It won't do well, it does not bode well for allocations of the state water project and the Central Valley project. How much water is available for recycled water in California? Uh, there's a quote from Water Reeves, three and a half million acre feet. Now, how, how much? Say that again. Three and a half million acre feet. Really? I've been saying five. Am I lying? I think it's more. Okay, let me amend that. It's five million <laughs> acre feet. <laughs> I don't know the Water Reeves. I, think, uh, I mean, in Southern California at Hyperion, it's yeah. three million, and okay. forty-five is Not taken either. by West Basin, and, and but they've got yeah. still two and a half. Left, well, so. thank you. We'll, we'll <laughs> revisit this slide and, and uh, figure out where that came from. We're going to do this on every slide, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It makes it more fun for me. So, uh, you said the last time was fun. My goal now is to make this one more fun. Okay. I like that. Yeah, you thank you. So the survey that, that was referred to, actually, uh, we, we uh, had a request from the um, office of, of Senator Feinstein and she really is passionate about recycled water too. She wants to help California, but what we found out is that she can't help an individual project, a region, or even just California. She needed to know what's happening across the United States. Right. So we used, the, the you see up at the top of the slides there, uh, we used the email database of Aqua Casa, Naqua Water Reuse, and our own, and uh, surveyed the United States. Turns out there are 92 projects that came back from that survey in 14 states. 92 projects, 65 of them from this slide you can see are in California, and the little pins represent in general where the location of those projects are. And the cost of those projects in our survey said, what do you have uh, that you're going to develop for recycled water in the next 10 years? And so this is what came back, over $5.6 billion worth of infrastructure and work, over a half a million acre feet of um, annual yields. So that's a lot of water. So what are the type of projects? There are 13 advanced treatment projects, um, nine tertiary treatments. So there's, that's why the cost if you, is 5.4 billion. So if you just did the, the math of 5.4 billion over 500,000 acre feet, it's, my God, it's $10,000 an acre foot. Well, it is expensive in terms of the advanced treatment. So those costs in there uh, kind of tilt the, uh, the cost of the program or the cost of the projects that are out there. Uh, so there's over 560 miles of pipe, purple pipe, 36 storage facilities, um, 58 pump stations, 23 projects to expand treatment. So very robust set of projects are in the works in the state of California now. Uh, we asked them, so do you need financial support? And uh, what came back, especially in California, almost half, 45% of the agency said they are unlikely or definitely will not go to construction without financial assistance. And that represents, that's the, the quarter of a million acre feet that I quoted up front. Um, so as uh, Jim indicated, we joined together with this, the staff here and re resurveyed those 65 projects plus a few extra um, projects and said what could be done in the next three years because at that point in time the drought emergency was declared and we got a response of 45 agencies, a billion dollars worth of infrastructure uh, could produce over 200,000 acre feet annually. So just to focus a little bit, why is 50% important? 50% of and recycled water projects is what is a common formula from the past. Typically, they have been able to get 25% from the federal government through a Title 16 program and 25% from one of the propositions out there. I have testified in front of Congress three times on the Title 16 program successfully for the Bay Area, but at this point in time with no earmarks available, the program is, is basically not available uh, for recycled water. So that, 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 that source is not there. Prop 13 and 50 funds have been expended. The Prop 84 funds, there are some funds now that are coming out, uh, some $200 million recently, that will help. Uh, in terms of that $5.4 billion backlog. Uh, so with no outside funding, uh, recycled water projects, 
can take up to 40 years to break even with their current source of uh, water and the cost of that. And it's very challenging for local governing bodies to invest in projects that have actually greater than 20 years. So an example that I use is our own Antioch Recycled Water Project, a $12 million project. So you can see in line one, if we weren't able to receive any partnerships from the state and federal government, the payback period was 43 years. So that would be the time where the cost of that new purple pipe versus what they're, the mortgage on that versus what they're paying today, it takes 43 years. We were able to get 25% from Title 16, 25% from state grants, Prop 50. That brought it down to 22 years, and the city council said yes. And this is a city council uh, that has the responsibility for police and many other social programs. So to talk them into purple pipe infrastructure uh, is challenging. And uh, especially for a project that has a payback period of greater than 20 years. That was at the same time that ERA came out and we were able to get a very low interest loan for half of the project. That brought that project down to within less than a year, their cost of water for uh, their project was less than uh, it was previous to that. So that's a success story that for a city that's struggling and um, quite frankly, near bankruptcy, um, to talk them into investing in recycled water. These are the kind of programs that are needed. So if you look at how do you get to that 50% uh, mark, this chart clearly shows that in terms of the, the loan programs that you offer. Uh, in the middle there you will see the 30-year loan structure and the 40-year loan structure. You're not uh, able or not offering a 40-year loan grant equivalent at this point in time, but I wanted to put that up there and, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But on the 30-year loan uh, grant equivalent, the 0% is equivalent in m many cases to a 46% uh, grant. And that is what I was just talking about is why that's important. So the, the, the closer you can get to 50%, we think the more incentivizing the program can be. Uh, and if you're able to get 40-year grants, then the, the half percent interest rate gets you right at the 50% mark, a quarter percent at 52 and 0% at 54. So my commitment is, uh, you know, I understand the concern that you're opening the barn door to, uh, to this program uh, by potentially lowering the interest rate and that you're offering 400 million and perhaps 200 million next year, 600 million. Recall there's a $5.4 billion appetite f in, in terms of recycled water development. So um, when I was back in D.C., just a couple of weeks ago, and I was working with staffs of both Feinstein staff and Boxer staff on, on the Feinstein bill. I said, why don't you guys put money into the Clean Water SR program? That's the only avenue available to us right now for recycled water um, funding and, and partnership. And they said, well, California already has funding. So, th so my message to you is let's that's good, and let's go ahead and get that out the door, and that makes a more compelling case when you go back and ask for federal assistance. It makes for a more compelling case when we talk about a water bond and how do we get more money for recycled water. So, um, you know, my message is let's, let's get the money out the door and into the ground. And one of the questions that, that um, um, Board Member Dudak asked was, you know, what are the, in terms of performance, in terms of the, the co coalition that, that uh, I'm involved with, we were able to secure over the last five years $40 million for those projects, and we got six of them in the ground. A new 30,000 acre feet of water is now available that wasn't five years ago. So my commitment also is that we won't camp on the money. We're ready to go, and we're very serious about that and, and producing new recycled water. So it's in nobody's interest to, to get a loan or get a grant and sit on that. We want to make sure that they perform and, and get, the, get, you know, get producing water. So the 40-year financing is something that, uh, that I brought up to, the, to Feinstein staff before they wrote the bill, and that is in there. They address the 40-year financing, and eventually, if that passed, would allow you to, to offer that. And I, I would just submit to you that when it comes to 30-year versus 40-year uh, type of interest or, or loan program, the benefits associated with recycled water are forever. So once you switch a system over to recycled water, it's highly unlikely you're ever going to switch it back. So the benefits are, in my opinion, forever. The infrastructure for a prudent utility, when you get purple pipe in the ground, the, the fee that you charge will also replace it at the end of its life. So you, you then have initiated the, 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 um, 
the pathway for this infrastructure to be in the ground and the benefits are far greater than actually 40 years. So finally, my uh, our uh, requested board actions, and I say our because I have joined with uh, CASA and Water Reuse uh, to make this ask, is that you approve somewhere in the zero to, to a quarter percent 30-year loans, not at the half percent. And again, you know, the logic is the closer you can get to zero percent, the closer we get to that 50-year or that 50 percent uh, match. And I realize that there are costs associated with the program. And from my, our perspective, it's hard to tell exactly what those are. But the bottom line and theme is, is maximize the amount of money we can get out the door and to recycle water. Support efforts to seek approval from EPA for these 40-year loans uh, for new water projects. And again, I've talked about the recycle water benefits are forever. Open the door, you know, to not limit loans to new recycled water projects and support efforts. Now, in our coalition, we have a private utility, the San Jose Water Company. Uh, they have a great set of recycled water projects. They cannot access the loan program at this point in time. Fourth, uh, extend or eliminate the eight and a half month window. You know, the thinking there is that I get it, uh, between now and December 1st, you want to incentivize applicants, but you also don't want to scare them away. So they hear, there's only, you know, typical applications take nine months to process. Um, and so why bother putting in an application if it's going to take longer than, than the actual sunset on the program? So our recommendation uh, is to, to make that a year and uh, $400 million, get that out the door, and then come back to the board and revisit that and see, see how, what the backlog is. Uh, and then others are going to get up and talk a little bit about this idea of the, the senior lien programs, uh, loans. That's very important to be addressed, repayment schedules and, and uh, refinancing. So with that, um, that's the end of my presentation, and I'm happy to accept any questions at this point. Thank you. That was very clear. Question. I have one question for staff, uh, actually, uh, on the idea that once in the investment's been made, it, it lasts forever. Is that, I, I know in the early days, uh, some smaller agencies got money put in recycled water and didn't work. Um, but more recently, what has been our experience in general? Is that true that... Uh, uh, if they get into the ground, they continue, or uh, do we have some failures, recent failures? I don't know of any failures recently. I think in general now, too, we look um, for the letters of intent and so forth that they have the users with it so that it isn't just, uh, well, I'll characterize the ones early on, it was a disposal method, to be honest and it wasn't a recycled water type project and that was a problem we have tightened up with that and and i think industry looks at it differently now too and they push the reuse of the water so we're very helpful or glad to be working with industry on that um, um, another question to staff i mean these these uh, seem to be pretty constructive uh, dialogue suggestions we touched on a few in our previous questions but um, sometimes there's the, the SRF rules that are federal that we don't have a lot of flexibility on is that the case at this point in time with the 40-year uh, payback period and or the private utility funding and would that require more work with our federal partners to yeah, address those issues 40 year is correct we do not have the authority to do that we are working to get an application and we're aware of Senator Feinstein's bill um, we hope it passes. We would like to offer that, and we certainly will be aggressive about applying for that for the state of California. As far as, Christopher, do you want the private? Yes, uh, so federal statutes would not allow us to finance a private utility. It has to be publicly owned treatment works. Yeah, so that's where there's much work yet to do in terms of figuring out a pathway for that any kind of public-private partnership. Mm -hmm. Uh, you need some kind of public agency responsible lead agency Correct. at this point. But that doesn't necessarily completely rule out private-public partnerships, does it? No, that's a slightly different animal. Yes, right, okay. Yeah. 
So we'll have to keep working together to figure out the, the entry way for those type of projects. Well, that's good. Yeah, you know, for my part as a civil engineer and the type of materials that are being put in the ground now, you know, I've opened up a lot of trenches and looked at a lot of 90, 120 year old pipe. And that was, you know, clay type material, not really the, the, the modern materials that are being used today. So going from 30 to 40 years from an engineering material standpoint certainly is not a stretch. So that's from good pipe, to see. Yeah. I'm very open to a 40 year term in those terms. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Great. So I have a question if we could go to uh, slide five. And this would be um, for both you and for staff to comment on. And I know that we're going to be working on these issues, hopefully um, with the drinking water program. But we'd just like to get your comments on why we don't see more red dots um, in areas that are stressed with drinking water challenges, particularly in disadvantaged communities, uh, the Salinas um, area and um, Tulare Lake Basin area in particular. Yeah, that, that is an excellent question. Thanks for asking that. And, and I think, you know, I'm going to speculate a little bit on this, but it's based on my experience that these are expensive projects. Mm -hmm. And so that local match is just hard to come up with uh, for a lot of communities out there. And that's why the, you know, the state benefits, the federal benefits I talk about all the time, the, the, there is a true partnership and the concept of new water. And with enough uh, incentive, we think that these communities will come forward. So I think you know this is this is the start of something that uh, we will definitely want a good track record on. And you know we're very open to new new entities coming into our coalition, or you know just in general, we're out there very passionately advocating for uh, you know more recycled water. But in my opinion, it's it's mostly. Um, just because of the cost of, of putting in the purple pipe and, and the new pump stations. But if you look at sl then your slide 11 um, and your recommendations on, you know, quarter of a percent, is that, is that incentive enough? I mean, I suspect there are additional barriers. Yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, at least from the survey that we, we took, that 50 percent mark came back routinely for the, for the agencies that are focused in the next 10 years to develop a recycled mm -hmm. water project. Is that enough? You know, in terms of the IRWM, uh, the Integrated Regional Water Management Planning process that DWR goes through, sometimes there are grants that are available up to 75 percent. So what is the tipping scale? It's really hard to tell. Um, I think this will be a program that we'll get out there and we'll, we'll be able to get some of that, that uh, data back and get some of the low hanging fruit, but we know there's a lot more out there. I, I, I think, could you describe the Visalia project? Because I don't know if you know, but Visalia actually has locked in a higher interest rate, a 2.5. And so how did they justify that? Okay, um, just if I could just answer the, um, the other question really quickly first. Um, and it was regarding the small disadvantaged communities. Um, we have seen an increase in small disadvantaged communities applying for water recycling. We never used to have any applications coming in. We have, I think, three in-house right now. So that's, we are starting to see hopefully the start of a new trend. I think um, there's the financial barrier, there's the financial capacity, but there's also probably more importantly is the technical and managerial capacity. So we're talking about communities where there may be a shortage of um, uh, certified operators, there could be a shortage of staff internally at these cities, counties, and districts, and um, they quite frankly may ha not have managed this scope of a project before. So that's where it becomes very important to partner them up with, with folks who can provide them with that technical and managerial capacity. Okay, and then um, what were you specifically asking for Visalia? Well, uh, Visalia has actually locked in a higher interest rate. Right. and. Uh, somehow they figured out what to do. Ha, what, what, what was special about Vesalia being able to work with the two, the two and a half percent? I think for, for Visalia, what we saw, and, and we're starting to see this as a trend as well, um, with uh, solar being a component of the project, you're looking at a project that's, you know, it's, it's a lot, it's like a $150 million project, but when you throw in like a million dollars in the solar portion, that really helps. One of the really energy intensive parts of this process is um, the actual treatment of the water. And so if you can get 
um, enough on-site solar production that could make that could tip the scale as far as um, you know the economic benefit. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And just to be clear, at France, 2.1 percent is what they got. I don't want to give them a higher interest rate than 2.5. Oh, 2.1. 2.1. <laughs> All right. Well, we may come back come back to that, but uh, on this point. Um, are you getting quibble about it? What are you I turning into Tam on that? <laughs> <laughs> the misprecision. This is the engineering wing on this <laughs> side. So that's fine. We this love is to the narrative side. <laughs> right. That's <laughs> fine, Felicia. We love to infect people. <laughs> that's right. I'm just going to laugh about that to myself for a while. The um, uh, just following on something else you said. And I apologize for just, there's been so much going on that I haven't caught up. I know there are so many bonds out there, and obviously the administration doesn't have a position yet, nor can we until the governor's office decides. But is, are there monies, grant monies at all in the, any of the bond things that if it did, did end up on the ballot and passed would become potential grant, not matches, but assistance? on these projects? Yeah, we're, we're definitely pushing for that and meeting with, I uh, met with um, Senator Wolk and also with um, uh, Assemblymember Rendon's staff and we showed them the survey, we showed them the appetite out there and our pitch to them is, you know, what was a billion dollars in, in the 09 bond, now they're talking about a half, we need more. That's the bottom line and, and so that, that's where I think. Because it yields real water. It's real water. And, and it's so forever water. It's forever water, and we want a backlog. So I think what comes out of this is just let's let's get a backlog, and then we can we can go and show the the senators uh, at the federal level and assembly here uh, that here's the appetite. These are real. We're getting them in the ground. So um, yes. So yes, right. we are definitely making that pitch, and and anywhere we can show them that that the actual appetite is 5.4 billion and the tipping point there is that half, you know, 50% partnership is what the hunt is typically. So, you know, every half million, half a billion is going to help, but quite frankly, you need two and a half billion to match that, that or more, 2.7 billion. To well, to do the whole thing, but it's yeah. just a mix of grant and cheap loans seems better than trying to do it all on loans. That's just it, my yeah, point. It does. And that's where the property. At least that's what I remember in my day, because we had, we missed the grant train yep. on our so work. That's where the Prop 13 program was really good. It was a mix of loans and grants. And your mm -hmm. staff here did just an excellent job. We, we uh, applied for those. It was efficient, and the money went out the door. And so I look back on that experience as very successful and, and encourage when they talk about bonds, uh, new bonds, to try and pattern after the, the Prop 13 program. So just to follow up on that, I mean, I think it would be helpful not just to be talking about appetite, but a needs assessment which kind of gets back to what we were talking about earlier on disadvantaged communities. If they don't have the capacity or uh, the operators out there, they're not going to express that they have an appetite. So uh, maybe a, an additional analysis on, the, on, on uh, what's, what the need is and uh, communities uh, that if they had these additional uh, funds, not just low interest loans, but grants and also technical assistance, um, that that need could be filled. Right. And, you know, along with that, you know, uh, the slide up there that I showed up in, in terms of our concluding remarks represents CASA and water reuse, and we've also worked with Aqua. But to the extent that we can educate that, you know, a lot of times those smaller communities, they'll throw up their hands and say, there's no way we can make it through that application process. And we'll say, wait, look at these that just went through. Here's how you can do that. And we're there to help them. So a lot of it is just getting going. And, and I think that educational component, I think the appetite is there. Uh, so I think it's a matter of getting the word out. Yeah, good. You know, and on, on this point, um, Dee Dee, I, you know, I was really struck by the comment letters that we received from Modesto, Turlock, and uh, Del Puerto Water District and that partnership between municipalities and agricultural interests. And so I, th I believe that speaks to that, you know, un, uh, unspoken demand maybe at this time. But that's maybe that could be a tip of the iceberg in terms of really multi-benefit, multi-agency efforts, really more of the integrated water management. 
So we really respect what you're, all the work you've done to to quantify the existing demand that's been voiced. But um, you can help us provide some leadership uh, to, to create projects like this with multi-benefactors that may have not been yet conceived. So it, it could be more than $5.4 billion. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. I know you'll be around. Right, and I just finally want to really thank your staff in terms of working through this and the resurveying and, and just the, the quickness and, and the enthusiasm there is, is awesome. So thank, thank you. you well, thanks much. for bringing it to us. You were the spark that lit it, so okay. thank you very much for that. Um, just so people know, um, normally I would take a break now, but I'm going to continue through public comment, and then we'll take a short 15-minute break and then come back for discussion and further questions. We won't close on this item until after we have a short break. Okay. Logan Olds, General Manager, Victor Valley Wastewater Reclamation Authority. Hi, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here again. Um, I'm not quite sure what to say at this point because it, I... You got your question answered I got my before question you even answered, got up so here? I, I guess I want to extend my gratitude and say <laughs> thank you again. Uh, Victor Valley Wastewater Reclamation Authority serves a community of about 300,000 people located in the Mojave Desert. Uh, the last I knew, we were actually leading the state of California for unemployment, and these projects are a very, very big deal for our community. We have been trying for 22 years to construct these facilities, and the stars have finally oh. aligned with a mixture of, of different grants and, and this program. My biggest fear was that we would possibly only construct uh, one facility that uh, we're hoping to receive the construction bids uh, and potentially award them shortly before the election. And you know how things are and how politicians get during election years. So our concern was that maybe one facility would be built, but my hope is that with uh, this low interest loan program that it will ensure both facilities will be built. Uh, what this means to our community is about, uh, once they're built out, about 800,000, or excuse me, 80,000 people will be able to receive um, uh, recycled water offset, right? So that's uh, what it's going to provide because we rely solely on groundwater and then some state water project water as the makeup obligation. So it's a, it's a really, uh, really important project. I keep saying that. So I'm just thrilled to be here. Thank you. Um, the staff, once again, this is my sixth. I've done six or seven state revolving fund loans uh, since 2002. And staff has always been just incredible to work with. There's, there's no better money that's out there, and there's no better group of people to work with to make it happen. So once again, thank you for your time and for considering our project. Thank you very much. Uh, Bobby Larson from CASA. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Bobby Larson with the California Association of Sanitation Agencies. And I won't say that I'm speaking for Dave Smith from Water Use California, uh, but I just wanted to let you know that if he were not at his conference in Southern California, he would be here today as well. And he has been, as Gary mentioned, a, a key part of uh, our effort on not only this, but on all recycled water issues. We look to Dave for his leadership. Uh, well, I guess I'm going to just kind of continue the theme here, which is to really thank uh, the staff mm -hmm. for all of their work on this. Um, Jim, Christopher, Julie, Dan, who's actually down with Dave Smith uh, and not here today. And, and that's right. He was there yesterday. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun to work with a group of people where you share a common goal and uh, you're all trying to come to, you know, agreement as to the best way to move forward. But I have to say, too, that um, it's not just on this effort. Uh, you asked about the bond measures, and uh, CASA just today sent over its support letter on AB 1331 by Assemblymember Rendon, which is the assembly version of the bond bill. And in that bill, there is, as Gary mentioned, a $500 million um, set aside for recycled water, and it's either low interest loans or grants. And we have advocated strenuously for that set aside partly because we think that's the best way to ensure you're going to get recycled water funded is to have a special pot of money for it, mm. but also, frankly, because we want these guys to be the ones in charge of it. Um, mm. We don't want it getting stuck over in some other nameless bureaucracy that um, handles other funding programs because these guys have proven that they know how to do it. So right. um, we're going to keep pushing for that, more, more money to this program for recycled water and, frankly, our other needs in, in the wastewater uh, community as well. Uh, and so 
I was going to come up here and talk about the, the issues uh, that are not uh, the interest rate type issues. Frankly, we're very supportive of the, of the financial incentives that the staff has proposed. Um, and Gary, we, we have a similar division. You have the engineering and the narrative. We have the math people and the non-math people. I'm the non-math person. So I was here to talk about the other incentives that were in our letter, including the um, senior lien debt. Uh, the board has done uh, my work for me by asking the questions, eliciting the answers, and I would have to say that um, of those three issues that were teed up in our letter, the one I hear about the most is this one of, let, of uh, subordination of debt. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I think Jim's answer was the right answer, frankly, which is that they will consider it on a case-by-case -case basis. And all we really wanted to do today was ask you to sort of um, send a signal that you trust them, that you want them to do that, that you want them to exercise their flexibility uh, to make the calls that it's not required in every case. And in fact, it can be um, a constraint on some projects moving forward. That's what I heard when we talked about the low interest rate. Frankly, I had more people, I didn't have a lot of people say, gee, if we could just get the interest rate down a little bit. What I had them say was, well, we have to deal with the non-interest rate related uh, potential barriers as well. So I think that's all we're, we're really looking for today is the board to, to send a signal to Jim and to his staff that, yes, you want them to uh, consider what's appropriate in each circumstance based on the overall credit worthiness of the agency, the status of the other debt, uh, when those payments become due, all of those things that go into the equation of, of how to make it all work from the community standpoint. Uh, and just two other quick points. One, on Buy America, we realize that wasn't your idea, that that's something that we all have to deal with. Uh, and I would say anything that we can do to help get clarity on that, I think that's the biggest issue, is people just don't know right now, and EPA hasn't told us everything that we need to know, but we're going to be um, engaging with EPA on this issue as well. So if there's, you know, I'll talk to Jim and make sure that if there's anything that we can say, look, this is what we really need to know because people, I had one of my members tell me that they're just in limbo on this and just need to know um, what the constraints are, what the requirements are. Um, and then lastly, uh, because we, it can't all just be a love fest. Uh, mm -hmm. Gary put up his slide with the, with the five points of agreement on behalf of water reuse and uh, CASA and the Western Recycle Water Coalition. And because I have members here in the audience and I have some members listening at home, I just want to clarify that, um, you know, Gary's the passionate one and he wants to do anything he can to get more recycled water, including allowing private utilities to get state revolving fund money. Uh, I just have to say that it is not CASA's position that we wish to do that. Uh, we do not want Christopher to go to D.C. And, and get that changed right now. I think we feel that this is all part of a long-term public uh, partnership between the state, the feds, and local government, and we'd like to see it remain that way. Uh, on the other hand, I think as Board Member Moore was indicating, there are many other ways in which we can bring the private sector into these projects and make sure that um, we're working together uh, to get more water out there. Um, so with that, I just thank you again, thank your staff, um, and uh, happy to answer any questions. I just have one. When you say a signal from us, given that staff has been so open to working it through, is that you want me to just wink <laughs> at James? Or <laughs> What's I was the about usual to use this. Um, <laughs> but is it is it, uh, it, it, it it what what is is it a, just a concern to people that it's going to be harder than it's been? I mean, I feel very strongly that they, especially given how well they've done with the fund, need to do their due diligence. And the key is not to risk the fund, but they've shown that they're ready, willing, and able to be flexible on these issues in the appropriate cases. So what sort of a signal from us I think is it. necessary and why? I, I mean, I think what just having the board say, yes, Jim, that's what we want you to do, is um, go and exercise your flexibility prudently uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. I think, frankly, I think there's a little bit of a lag uh, because all of the wonderful things that, that I said and meant about the program I would not have said 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and it's because of a concerted effort on the part of this board and your staff to make this program better, mm -hmm. to make it work better, to have it be more responsive to customers, et cetera. Some people who haven't gotten loans in a long, long time still have the old paradigm. Oh, it's that whole elephant minds. thing. Yes. And I tell them that Jim tells me this and I believe him. But I think just for them to hear from you that, yes, you endorse that, uh, right. that that is, in fact, what, okay. what the staff is empowered to do, I think that would just go a long way. Okay. Thanks. I just need to understand that a little bit better.
So is that what you would like us to do? <laughs> yes, I think. Yeah. Unless there's an objection. So figure out how to do that somehow. Because you can't put a little emoticon wink in there. To really, <laughs> that won't work. I don't. It think. is. It is in but staff without, discretion, don't and and so we have not been doing it in the past, but we will now um, be doing it on a case by case okay. basis. Okay. All right. Thank Great. You. Thank you very much. You can kind of tell this is one of our favorite subjects. My apologies to those of you who are here on other items. Um, uh, e. J. Shalaby, West County Wastewater District. Mr. Shalaby, I hope I pronounced that correctly. And you did a wonderful me. job, thank you. <coughs> I will be brief with my, uh, with my comments um, given the, the time of this board uh, this morning. So thank you, Chair Marcus and Water Board members. My name is E.J. Shalaby. I'm the General Manager for the West County Wastewater District and I appreciate being here today. Uh, the West County Wastewater District was formed in 1921 and serves a population of about 93,000 people in western Contra Costa County and I'm here today on behalf of the district to offer our support on agenda item number three, uh, the proposed resolution providing funding incentives for the Clean Water State Revolving Fund program um, directed to incentivize near-term recycled water project. Our agency is contracted to, deli to deliver up to 12 million gallons of recycled uh, to a recycled water program that supplies process water to a, to a refinery in Richmond, California. Mm -hmm. Although the district's NPDES permit does not include nutrient removal, the refinery cannot tolerate ammonia concentration spikes greater than one milligram per liter. Therefore, the district provides treatment levels above and beyond the NPDES discharge permit by operating the secondary process to remove ammonia. While the district is able to remove ammonia most of the year, seasonal changes and the influent wastewater characteristics have an impact on the system's reliability for several months out of the year. Now, these effects have been exasperated, obviously, in the recent years due to, due to the drought conditions. Uh, with the district being unable to remove ammonia, potable water then is used in lieu of recycled water to satisfy their needs. The district has a project plan in the CIP to improve reliability of ammonia and nutrient removal. However, this project was planned um, 10 to 15 years out uh, due to funding limitations on our end. By passing this resolution today, the district has the opportunity to implement the project immediately uh. and improve the reliability of the recycled water program and reduce potable water uh, usage in the region. So as you consider the resolution today, we of course offer our support for it and suggest the following. We've talked about uh, these already. Increasing the amount of available funding, um, and I'll read through them quickly, a flexible